tests that detected CTE in former linebacker Fred McNeil while he was alive, making McNeil potentially the first person in the world to be diagnosed before death. Let's bring in CNN's own Dr. Sanjay Gupta for more on this. Sanjay, you got a chance to sit down exclusively with the McNeil yeah. family. What do they have to say? Well, it was quite an insight into what life is like inside a home when someone suffers from CTE. Jake, we hear the headlines often, but uh, we don't oftentimes see the, the, the real personal part of this. And also this technology, what might it mean if we can diagnose this disease while people are still living? Take a look. The night before he passed, he was watching Monday Night Football, and he had his UCLA slippers under his bed. He loved the game, and he was proud of what he did. Even to the very end of his life, former Minnesota Vikings linebacker Fred McNeil loved football. He was a monster. He was a monster indeed, like all over the field, first one to the ball. Despite how much of his life, football later took from him. Fred did everything he was, you know, he played ball, went to law school, prepared for life after football. You know, we had the kids. You know, it was a good life. McNeil played in two Super Bowls, was really no ordinary player. His sons say, no ordinary man. He was a best friend of ours, our first best friend, you know, he was a Superman. And then it changed. It changed. CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, entered their lives. Of course, at the time, they had no idea what was happening. I remember we were playing basketball, me and him. We kind of got into an argument while playing, and and he started getting aggressive with me. There was maybe two moments where he lost it and punched holes in the walls, and it was like, wow. CTE can hit hard and fast. McNeil, just in his 40s, lost his job as a lawyer, filed for bankruptcy, lost the home. I had a conversation with my mom, and I was like, you know, I think something's going on. Like, he needs to go see a doctor, a therapist, something to figure out what it is. It is something I noticed myself when I first met Fred back in 2010. Just talking to you, I can tell that it's a, it's, it's a little bit difficult for you. I mean, do, do you remember my name? <laughs> oh, Sanjay. Got it, yeah. Oh, right. Okay, <laughs> good. Rage, memory loss, depression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did your father have all three of those? Definitely, definitely, yeah. He, um, that, that was another point of worry for us because there was times when, you know, he would talk about ending it and we were like, no way, like, this is not, this is not our dad. But it was their dad, a different dad, and it was easy to be angry with him. After all, they didn't know he had CTE. It couldn't be diagnosed until after his death. And you also made, made the decision to have Fred's brain donated after he passed away. So well, I had made the decision early on, but yes. The first thing I want to show you is this. And now for the first time, she is seeing her husband's brain and exactly what football did to it. And all the brown blotches you're seeing are tau, which is the protein we see in CTE. Dr. Bennett Omalu recently made famous when Will Smith portrayed him in the movie Concussion. If you look at his hippocampus, this is the part of the brain that controls his memory. He had significant memory impairment. You can see how CTE ravaged McNeil's brain. But perhaps even more remarkable, Dr. Omalu tells us he already knew Fred McNeil had CTE before he died. How? using a PET scan technology that he helped develop and partly owns. You could see the red areas is identifying the tau in his brain. If it is true, Fred McNeil would be the first person in the world to have his CTE diagnosed while still alive and then confirmed with an autopsy after his death. It explains a lot um, because I am seeing a lot of that, the tau protein. But it is early, too early. Just 14 NFL players, including Hall of Famer Tony Dorsett, have been examined using this technology. Only McNeil's diagnosis has been confirmed. The question is, will the test be able to distinguish CTE from other dementias, like Alzheimer's? Fred played in the first 10 years of the league, so this is what, Super Bowl 50's coming, okay? So, I know there's a huge number of players and families between, you know, 
that point and now when Fred first start playing that are going to be experiencing this and it's it's important to have information for them to get help and um, support. Just a, a remarkable and candid family, Jake. A couple points r really quickly. You know, th there's something known as selection bias. A lot of the people who are having this testing done, donating their brains, are people who are worried that they might have CTE. That's in part a selection bias. Also, Jake, it raises this question. Would you want to have a test done if there was nothing you could do about the results? There is no particular treatment.